over the best Doctor Who in the uh, uh, the best American Doctor Who, right? So I trolled through every episode. Uh, the classic series, you you literally literally just have uh, uh, the chase. Now, what episode was chase was that in? With uh, 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 when they're when they're on the here, man, let me see if I can find it. Here we go for episode three, you think? Probably. Hang on. Let's have a look. It's uh, First Doctor, Season 3, The Chase. Oh, Season 2, it says The Chase. Uh, do I have the... Oh, here we go. Do I... Is it... I think Episode 4. Let's have a quick look at Episode 4. See if this is the one. It's towards the end, as I recall. They're on the Empire State Building. Oh, no, let's say when they make the... See, I love this. Uh, I will infiltrate and destroy, right? Oh, fine, this was the mummy one. No, it's not this one, the haunted house one. Maybe uh, episode three. I mean, I was right the first time. Second guess myself. Always a mistake. There we go. Yeah, 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 there. Peter Purvis. This is all the American Doctor Who about the first uh, uh, 20, 26 years. God, will I interrupt my stream for this? Let's go meet the Daleks. Morning. No, no, mate. No, I'm from Alabama. No, mate, you're from uh, North London. Yeah, it's funny when the dark man. This goes on for a while. Sure, but don't beat off. <laughs> God darn it! If they ain't gone and done with the game. <laughs> <laughs> How <laughs> deep, mister? Say, you sure are an ugly looking friend. <laughs> yeah, so that, but again, that was basically it. <laughs> we have, you know, the, uh, the, the rocket pilot in Tomb of the Cybermen was, a, I think it was Canadian, actually, not American, right? Two doctors nearly set in New Orleans, but they couldn't work that out with the, uh, uh, with the, the tourist uh, industry there. And of course, we have uh, Je uh, we have uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Martin Luther King at the very beginning of Remembrance of the Daleks. But that's really it, right? That's really it until we get to Enemy Within, right? So Enemy Within, uh, which will be the uh, uh, you know the um, Paul McGann uh, only TV episode, right? Enemy Within. Uh, I think that's a solid good story, right? I really do. I I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. It was a bit too. Uh, of a pastiche of Doctor Who. But, I mean, I love the chase sequences. I think that re weirdly really worked, right? I loved uh, uh, the master, uh, uh, Eric Roberts' master. That really genuinely came together. So that, um, so that's like our first, you know, real Doctor Who in the USA. So, yeah, what's better? So the next one we had, is, and we're going to work out which is better and worse, and we'll, we'll, we'll work out a ranking that way. Next one we have is Daleks in Manhattan and the Evolution of Daleks, which Ralph C. Davis did say was a direct uh, sequel to um, uh, uh, the, the, the Chase, because he he thinks the Daleks arrived there and they uh, looked around and they went, oh, oh, we, we the Empire State Building, we can use that again. So there's a lot that really really worked. There's one scene that I think that really worked when it, when they mix the Art Deco. Uh, with the Dalek, and boy, did that work well. Let me pull that up because that that that's that was a freaking awesome scene. That'd be our tenth Doctor season three, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Dalek in Manhattan. Yeah, we go. This is about here where they. Uh, um, is this where the Dalek comes in? Hang on. How tired you are. Hang on. Yeah, this this scene right here. One second. Out there and finish the job. 
Yeah, that was perfect, right? It fits. It fits beautifully into. Uh, and there's this other bit here where you have these two Daleks talking in secret, uh, uh, and they're uh, you know they uh, uh, they look. At, I love it that they look around first to make sure no one's listening. And where is this? Got the pig pig man. Or oh, maybe it's in the next episode. I can't remember. Uh, and you get you do get a great uh, uh, a great da dance number in, in in this story as well. But I would say I'm going to put Dark Man having an evolution of the darks because I, mean, I think the villain was kind of weak. Uh, um, well, uh, I'm going to put I'm going to say put that's number two. That's that goes after Enemy Within, right? So we get a little bit of America in End of Time, but not really. But then the next time we 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 we, get, we head to America is the impossible astronaut and down the moon. Now, that is a very, very American-centric story, right? Uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, the movie could have uh, stood... Uh, the movie could have stood to have John Pertwee in the lead. Ah, I like Paul McGann. I, I, I was kind of happy they were moving Doctor Who forward at that point. Um, so, impossible astronaut, down the moon. Yeah, that is... Completely tied into Americana and uh, American history, and I think they they really represent it well. I think they get the 1960s aesthetic really really well. I like the basic story of it as uh, and the mystery of it. It's scary, introduces the silence and the way they they make everybody uh, they defeat the uh, the silence in the end by making them part of the moon landing right, which is it, which everybody watches. I think that was absolutely brilliant. So uh, with. Which is better, right? It's certainly better than Daleks in Manhattan, Evolution of, Evolution of the Daleks. Do, I think I prefer Enemy Within, right? I do. I think I prefer Enemy Within. So I'm putting that at my number two slot, right? E uh, Impossible Astronaut, Day of the Moon. That's uh, the second best one, right? And then we got the Angels Take Manhattan. Now, that was good in that... Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's like, it, it was a good way of saying goodbye to Amy and Rory. There's a lot about it that was kind of silly. It kind of relied on it. Um, I do it now. It's certainly uh, I put uh, Enemy Within and Impossible Astronaut above the above uh, Angels Take Manhattan and uh, uh, above uh, Daleks in Manhattan. Is it better or worse? Uh, I'm going to say about equal, right? I'm going to say now you would, and that's basically it. That's basically it. But we're going to go to a little bit of of other media as well. So this first one we want to look at over here is Minuet in Hell. Minuet in Hell, which is a very American um, uh, um, based Doctor Who story. This is so. This came out in what year? Two thousand and one. Where Buffy the Vampire Slayer was was just in vogue about everything. Everybody loved Buffy, and so they they have a Buffy uh, replacement, with Becky Lee. It's got Nicholas Courtney in. Uh, it's a, it's the first Nicholas Courtney, Paul McGann. So they really wanted to get get together. So this was an adaptation of I would say a far better fan production called Minuet in Hell, um, where the Doctor doesn't really know who he is, and they should have had a better actor play the Erstats Doctor and said they had Nick Briggs, I believe. Uh, and it didn't really work, right? You should have had a famous actor play the Doctor. But what really killed this, and it killed it, it did, was the American accents, which were shockingly bad, right? They were absolutely awful, right? They In every way, shape, or form, they were absolutely, absolutely awful. Um... And this was really uh, like Big Finish was really riding on a high at this point, um, but the American accents it was made it one of their worst releases. Uh, in terms of story, it's bloated and overlong. Uh, this Doctor Who does Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You do get Charlie in like some kinky, uh, you know, uh, uh, sex club outfit, which I, I kind of liked until you look at India Fisher. But you know, you've got to make your own Charlie in your head. So, uh, um, so where would I where would I rate this one? Um, I'm gonna put this belief. I'm gonna put this at the bottom, right? Uh, uh, so over here, so we go minuet and how let's put over there now. Next one, next American based Doctor Who one. I think this one might actually be, be the winner. This one is excellent. How on earth? So we go. So, this is from McGann's second season, 
Written by Mark, uh, Mark Gaddis. Oh man, do I have to? How can I get? Can I play the trailer? Hang on, I would have to like make a video of it. <sighs> so annoying, right? It's so bloody annoying. I, I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bother. But okay, Mark Gaddis. So this is uh, 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 set at the same time. Orson Welles is doing his famous um, uh. War, war, uh, war of the Worlds transmission, where everybody thought there was a real alien invasion going on. And at the same time, there's a real alien invasion going on, which the Doctor and Charlie stumble on. This is pure Doctor Who, right? 380, I think this is well worth the money, right? This is pure, pure, pure Doctor Who, uh, really embedded in uh, um, Americana, right? I, I just absolutely... It's Halloween, 1938, the year of the mysterious meteorite uh, lit up the skies of New York. Manhattan invaders lay waste to the nation, or at least according to the soon-to-be infamous Orson Welles. Who played Orson Welles in this? Uh, Orson Welles. David Benson. Oh, he's David Benson does a lot of voices. Uh, uh, does, Kenneth Williams, I think, David. It also did Panda Bear, I believe, in the uh, Iris Wild theme stories. Uh, that were just, uh, uh, but uh, what are some of the panicked listeners to the legendary War of the World broadcast weren't imagining things? Attempting to deliver Charlie to her, her rendezvous in Singapore in 1930, the doctor overshoots a little, uh, arriving in Manhattan just in time to find a dead private detective. Yeah, I, I again, City of Death uh, 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 vibes going all the way through this, right? Indulging gumshoe fans as the doctor is soon embroiled in a hunt for a missing Russian scientist. Whilst Char Charlie finds herself at the mercy of a very dubious fi uh, fifth columnist, uh, with some genuinely out, uh, out this world merchandise at stake, the TARDIS crew are forced into alliance with a sultry dame named Glory Beach. <laughs> that she was actually good. Orson Welles himself and a monster uh, with, with a nose known as uh, uh, with half a nose known as the Phantom. But surely so, uh, something is drawing plans against them. And they're just not very good ones. Uh, yeah, this is excellent, right? In terms of story, this is such a strong story. I'm putting this at number one. This is at the number one slot. It's beating um, Enemy Within uh, by, by a long way, actually, by a long way. Uh, fine, uh, not fine, we got this one. This is also a really, go a really good one. So they experimented with ultra cheap, releases this was like 99 cents or something at the time right and it was a really strong experiment you had voyage of it basically had colin baker join up with jago and lightfoot and they did voyage to venus and then this one voyage to the new world so voyage to venus was kind of fun uh this one was much more serious this was uh uh jago and lightfoot at the, the you know basically at the dawn of america uh J jago and lightfoot and the Sixth Doctor in The Last of the Mohicans, right? So, Ranoki in the, uh, 1590. The TARDIS materializes in the past, and the Doctor uh, and the Doctor's companions, Professor Lightfoot and Henry Gordon Jago, find themselves uh, natives in a new world. Well, the science strange here. Stranger than, uh, um, than even the colonists led by uh, Englishman John White. What are the ghostly children, and uh, who uh, who is the old man of... Uh, Croton, I have no idea. Or oh, Croton. The travelers are about to discover uh, the secret of the lost colony, uh, and it may cost Jago, uh, may cost uh, Jago's life. Yeah, I just remember this being a solid story, right? It's expensive though, but it's like a one disc release. And they got it at six eighty, and the excellent Invaders of Mars they have at three eighty. Like, like. This makes no sense, right? This makes absolutely no sense. But this, this again, solid. This, this is a one, uh, one disc. But yeah, okay. So six thirty four for this, or three eighty. Yeah, for this is a two disc release, right? Yeah, madness, right? Absolute madness. So there's one more entry, right? Which is I'm putting down as apocrypha. Let me just pull it up. But uh, I, I think I, it's a. Totally worth a mention. Yeah, in a second. I'm just vomiting in my mouth. Don't worry, everybody. It's, it's perf perfectly normal at my age. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, do, do, do graphic novel. Hang on. Opening up. Uh, uh, do I have it here? 
Widow's Curse, Cold uh, Cold Day in Hell, World Shapers. No. Yeah, let me me Google it then. One second. We'll do uh, Doctor Who, the Good Soldier. So this was written by Andrew Cartmel. Um, where are we up to? So, uh, one second. There you go. Right. At least, at least I can get 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 the cover. Uh, doink! I'll put this over here. Here it comes, doink. Where am I? Go over here. Stop screen. Share screen. Doink. The Good Soldier. So this is a cracking little story. Um, who does the art on this? I can't remember. Is it? I think I'm pretty sure it's it's Lee Sullivan, right? So yeah, it's the Seventh Doctor, Eighth uh, Mondosian Cybermen, and it, basically they're in this uh, um, little diner uh, out the way of anywhere in in the middle of uh, uh, America with a, with a cyber invasion and the military coming in. Uh, uh, and it's um, uh, it's excellent, right? I think I really think this is excellent. I, you know what? I'm going to put this at number two, even though it's a comic strip, right? Uh, well, I said, where, where, where I'm putting Voyage of the New World? Where, where, where? We've been so that I'm putting a, a I'm putting that after Enemy Within, right? So doing. Hang on. So good soldier, yeah. So it's set in the 1950s. Um, so for some reason, the TARDIS has uh, uh, chameleon so got has got fixed, and now it's a American hot rod car. They come to the diner, and they find that the Cybermen have infiltrated, and then they find that that whole section of the of uh, the desert has actually been sucked up by a cyber ship, right? And so it's the Cybermen with American nineteen uh, fifties military, to um, and there's like nice parallel uh, parallels between them. It's probably one of the strongest things that that, that Andrew Cartmel wrote. I mean, it really genuinely is. So where am I going to put this? Uh, I'm putting this at the number two slot. Wow, man, that's actually wow. I've uh, I liked it, you know, more more than I thought. Fine. So let's. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not including the chase. Okay, that's not an American story. One second. Let's uh, make this a bit bigger so we can. Not that big. Down another one. There you go. So fine. Let me share the screen. So from the meager, meager, meager open offerings, right, of Doctor Who in USA, here's what I would say are the best. Invaders of Mars. It's not even close. It really is very good. A good soldier. uh, Not that far behind. Uh, uh, Enemy within. Again, people bitch about it. I liked it a lot, right? I mean, I liked it. Look, I liked it more than Impossible. Do I like Impossible Astronaut down the moon more? Yes, I did. I find it much more on job. That's true. That's true. Voice of the New World. You know what? I'm putting that. Oh, no, it's good. No, I'm putting that. I'm changing, changing the order. Let's bring uh, Impossible and Day of the Moon up a little bit. Right? Um, Angels Take Manhattan. Uh, uh, how many? What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Top eight, right? We can't do ten because there aren't ten. Right, so this is the top eight uh, 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 American set Doctor Who, as as decided by science, ladies and gentlemen. By science, I say science, damn it. My name's Hila Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and do subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to me on Rumble. I'm on YouTube. Uh, uh, I'm on Twitter. Follow me somewhere, baby. Give me a sub. Uh, uh, that'll be fan dabby. Double dozy. So my name's Hila Beck, and rabbi from another planet. Like, share, subscribe. Do subscribe, and have yourself a freaking awesome day. Yeah.